Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here then my name is Katie, I'm an artist and illustrator and today I thought I'd show you a real-time process video and just talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing and you can see how I actually do my brush strokes in real time because I think a lot of the time when I speed it up and when I watch a lot of speed paint videos it's really hard to tell exactly how long things take and I think it makes things look a lot easier than they are. So for this one it was quite a quick challenge. I decided to time myself for this one and the paint layer took about 10 minutes. Then I let that dry and then I came back for the details layer and that took about 5 minutes. So quite a quick one and I have cut out a lot of the in between bits just so that this video isn't quite so long but all of the brush strokes and things that you see are done in real time. So this one was quite a bit different for me and this was done in one of my smaller sketchbooks as part of my daily painting challenge and this was day 39. It's very different to a lot of my paintings because it was so loose. I'll pop the reference up on screen now and by the end of the video you'll see that it doesn't look anything like this but it was a good experiment in sort of using the reference as a base rather than as an actual copy. I think I've mentioned on this channel before that I rely quite heavily on references and it's something I'm trying to sort of wean myself off of. And so I really just wanted to use the reference as like a base. It helped me work out where to place like colour and value and although it's not like perfect it definitely helped give me a starting point because I don't feel like I can just go straight into not using references at the moment. You can see that I'm just doing some random mark making. I am using the reference in terms of like working out the subject. I know that there's like some, there's some leaves on the left which is that big blob of sort of yellow green. And although this looks like a complete mess, it kind of makes sense in my head and I know that I'm going to sort of make it look a bit better when I add in more details. There's always a stage where the painting looks ugly beforehand um, like before I add in all the details and I do find that a lot of the times I want to give up and you know I, I feel like I'm a terrible artist and it's not working very well but I do find that often if I do push through then it usually comes out better and also I think that pushing through and not giving up helps me learn more than you know just not not seeing through the final painting so even if this didn't turn out well I think I'd still have learned something and this definitely isn't like a good painting or one of my favorites but I definitely learned a lot and it did I think I mentioned in my daily painting like recap video that this did really well on Instagram which I was really surprised at because like I say it didn't take me very long but I think like the brightness of it definitely made it more appealing and I'm not really sure what drew people to it but um, yeah I was quite surprised by how much engagement this one got. So I'm just being really loose with my brush marks. I'm not like thinking too much, I'm just getting lots of different greens on my palette and just throwing it on the page. So I let that dry and then I came back for the details part and used my Prismacolor pencils and my Neocolor crayons which are my favourite mediums and I always tend to finish off my paintings with those. So I'm refining some of the leaf shapes a bit more and it still looks quite crude. I think the marks are very basic and at this stage I thought that there was no saving it really. Um, so I try to be a bit more looser and I scribble a bit more so I think because I kind of thought this was a lost, lost cause it helped me loosen up and so I could just scribble and really have fun with it. So I'm just placing like some random little leaves and this isn't realistic obviously at all. These are very basic leaf shapes you know the like cartoony ones. 
um, and I'm again I'm just using different shades of greens and you can see here like some of them don't even look like leaves and I'm getting more and more looser with my mark making and I think that definitely helps I think it makes the the whole effect of the painting look like it was supposed to look like this And then I added on the berries. Now this is from the reference picture and I really, really love the pop of red orange that this adds. I think it really changes the whole painting. And again, it's not realistic at all and they're just little orange and red dots, but I think it really helps with the contrast of colors and I'm really glad that I added this on. So the rest of the page still looks very rough and ready. It's obviously not very defined at all, um, but you'll see later when I take off the tape that that definitely helps it look finished because looking at it now, I'm thinking that it still looks really unfinished and really rough. So I just add on a lot more details. I keep coming back and forth with the Neo Color pastels and the pencils. So that's generally how I create my artwork is just to use them in tandem. And you'll see a couple of times that I have like two, like here I've got two in my hand and I just flick back and forth. So it's not like I'll use Neo Colors for the next layer and then I'll go onto pencils. I kind of use them at the same time. So with the brighter greens, I just like add on some more marks and more scribbles just to fill in a bit of the spaces and make it look a bit more finished. And at this point, I'm not really looking at the reference picture at all. I'm just sort of looking at my page and seeing where I think it works best. I definitely add, I definitely want to add a lot more contrast. So I kind of just place this on where I think it needs it. The pencil layers really nicely over the paint, so I think that works really nicely. The pencils don't go over the Neo Color pastel, so I mostly put in the pencil marks over just the paint layer. And the paint didn't sit really nicely in this sketchbook. This is just a cheap Eco Sea White sketchbook, so it's it didn't buckle, which was good. Um, it did actually hold up quite nicely with the gouache paint, which is what I use for the base layer but it doesn't feel like it sat very nicely on the paper and it definitely showed a lot more texture, but I think that works quite well for this subject. So I'm just filling in a bit more shapes and instead of just doing like line marks with the pencil, I'm really filling in some more block color. I love the effect of this really bright sort of yellow green Neo Color pastel and you can see there on the left, I added the scribble and I really like that mark. So I add a bit more and just having this extra layer of the brighter colors, I think definitely helped make this the painting that it is. Uh, it feels like just keep layering and layering definitely helped it. And then the sky sort of blue in the background was getting a bit lost. So I added some more blue with the pencil and I didn't add this all over, but I did add it to some of the areas of the page. And I think that definitely helps make it look a bit more like there was a reason to it, like it was supposed to be there. And I could have filled it all in with this blue, but I kind of like how I did this, like just parts of it and kept some of the white as well. So it wasn't totally in your face and too overwhelming. It was hard to know when this was finished, this piece, and I'm sure I could have kept going with the layers, but um, like I said, I only gave myself a short amount of time for this one. So I just keep coming back to it um, until like my time is up really and just keep adding more and more marks. So the berries were getting a little bit lost so I just really wanted them to pop because I really liked the contrast with the colours so I just use my Himi gouache paints and make the berries a bit more brighter and just layer on top with some extra gouache. 
I don't think it makes a huge difference. It doesn't look like it does on the video, but I think in real life it definitely helped just to bring them to the foreground a little bit more. And I add a few more on as well. On this one, I didn't have a sketch or anything, which definitely helps keep me loose. And I worry a bit less about the final result because I don't feel like it has to follow the sketch and I can just do whatever, like whatever I want to really. And yeah, I'm just adding more and more berries because I think that they work so well. And then I take off the tape. So this is just some painter's masking tape, which I got from Jackson's Art. And sometimes I find that this does peel off the paper, especially in this sketchbook, and it rips it, which is a shame, but I got lucky on this one and it didn't tear at all. And I think the really neat edges, like the crisp white edges that this gives, really, really helps make this look finished. I think if it had like rough painty edges, it would feel a bit more like a just a random sketchbook page. So I really like how this finished it off. And you'll see there that I totally smudged the gouache because it wasn't completely dry. So I just cover that up with a bit of colored pencil just to try and hide that. And that's the finished painting. So I hope you enjoyed watching this sort of real time process and hearing my thoughts and what I thought about it. If it's something that you're interested in, then do check out my Patreon, which has just launched, where I'll be sharing a bit more about my process and go a bit more in depth into my artwork and how I create everything. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this one, and I hope you have a lovely week. See you later.